practice for you. So as always, we'll start out standing up nice and tall, feet are together if they touch, and if they don't touch, just have your feet parallel to one another, but a comfortable distance apart. <clears throat> Loose neck and shoulders, three deep breaths. Deep inhale up, looking up. Exhaling to the right wrist. Inhale, fingers by the feet, look forward slightly. Exhale to the left wrist. And inhale up onto the hands, look deeply forward now. Take those feet back, exhale, forelimb stick. Inhaling cobra or upward facing dog. And a second chaturanga to downward facing dog on the exhale. feet forward, deep inhale, stretch up to the chest, then bow on the exhale, and inhale to upward hands mountain. Inhale right back up, exhale to the right wrist, <laughs> inhale, fingers by the feet, peek to the front of your mat. Exhale, left wrist. Inhale up onto the hands. Take the feet back. Look forward as you exhale. Deep inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And our second chaturanga, exhaling the downward facing dog. Feet up, deep inhale, exhale to the shins, and inhale to upward hands mountain. Right back up, inhale, exhale, inhale on the fingers, peek forward, exhale, left wrist. deeply forward, and exhale back to forward and stick, inhale, cobra, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, and exhale, Loose neck. Pranamta. Deep 
deep inhale, look forward. Slide your hands straight back, straight legs, bow to the shins. And inhale up. And our last sun salutation. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, right wrist. Inhale, fingers by the feet, look forward slightly. Exhale, left wrist. Inhale onto the hands, now look way forward. Exhale, forward and stick. Looking forward here. Inhale. And then we exhale, nose tap, downward facing dog. Feet up, exhale finishes, inhale, hands straight back, exhale, and inhale to upper hands mountain. So we're going to do some ab work, Navasana, boat sequence. So we're going to take our vinyasa right through from downward facing dog to the seated position. So inhale up, exhale to the right wrist. Inhale, fingers down. Exhale, left wrist. Inhale, the hands look forward. So our nose touches the mat or the floor in forward and stick. So down. Inhaling, cobra, our upward facing dog. Our second chaturanga, downward facing dog. And then let's bring those feet forward. Exhale, dandasana. Good form. Heels on the floor. Ankles about even with the front edge of your mat. Lift your sternum right up. Press your shoulders down and back. Let's pull the feet in on a deep inhale and reach the arms forward. So we kind of pivot back a little bit and hold. This might be our position here. You can have your knees or shins parallel to the floor or you can extend straight. Sternum up. Back to the seated position, 
One more pose on each side, and then we're done with that Navasana sequence. This time, one legged recline Navasana. So we're going to recline again. Back down. Right leg up. Left leg just a couple inches above the floor. Same torso position. Soft wrists. You can stay reclined, just hugging the knees to the chest. Or inhale, exhale through your vinyasa. Back to that seated position, proper form, reclined position. Right leg up, left leg up, shoulder scooped, soft wrists. Deep inhale, half the yasa. We are going to come back to Baba Hastasana now. Feet in the same position, hands go underneath. Deep breath, stretch up, and bow on the exhale. And a half vinyasa to Uttida Trikonasana. Right big toe inhales up between the wrists. Stand up tall. Second toe and heel at the front. Arch of the back. Look left. Stretch out. Down over the straight right leg. Hand goes on the ankle, top of the foot, or the big toe. Pronom 
front toe. And you can just switch side or take your half vinyasa. Left big toe comes up between the wrists. Open up the toes, second toe on a heel, arch at the back, stretch to the right with the gaze, lean to the left with the arms and torso. Step forward, knee above the ankle, left elbow to the knee, keep that shoulder pulled into the chest, it's easy to collapse. If your elbow's on your knee, reach up, make your hand to the outside of your foot, reach forward. Big step forward, turn 90 degrees to the left. Feet centered, pelvis centered. You can have your feet square with your second toe in line with your heel, or you can turn your feet out. Just depends on your hips and hamstrings. Let's give a deep stretch up on the inhale and fold on the exhale. Hands shoulder width apart on the mat between the feet. Inhale, stretch out, and then exhale, fold. Pro 
down on top. Turning around again, so half the nyasa. Or just step one leg back, the other forward. Turn to the left again. We're going to come down to the big toes. Same leg position. Nice deep inhale, stretch up. Exhale, bow down. Proper toe lock. Index and middle finger around the toe, thumb on the tip. Inhale a second time, stretch up. And then exhale, pull down with your chest. Relax your neck. Let's turn around again. Half the nyasa or switch side. Right leg to the back of the mat. Stand up nice and tall. We're either going to come back down to our big toes or reach back to our heels. So a little bit deeper stretch here. Inhale, lift up. Exhale down. Taking the big toes, proper toe walk, or reaching around the heels. Inhale, either way, stretch up, and fold. Go ahead and switch sides. Right foot to the back of the mat in the center. Left foot to the front center. Work that right foot back a little bit. Hand on the knee, left hand. Take your half and yourself. Mm -hmm. Lean forward here, downward facing dog. 
Drop onto the sole and side of your left foot. Step your right foot back or keep it on the floor for support. Right arm up. And our last half in the asana, the standing sequence. So from downward facing dog, right to the seated position. Stretch those feet forward, proper alignment. Sit up nice and tall in the center of your mat. Shoulders and neck soften. Staying with the breath. I'm going to come right down to the big toe. So inhale, stretch up. Exhale. Take those big toes towards the index and middle fingers. Feet together or apart, doesn't matter. You can stay right here in Dandasana or take a half Vidyasa. Feet back in the same position. We're going to come down to the sides of the feet. So good posture, sitting up tall, staying with the breath. Nice inhale up. Stretch yourself over your thighs. Keep your back straight and around you. your hands a little bit down the outsides of your feet and press elbows towards the floor. Pull gently with your arms and flex your biceps. Take a half in the asa. We'll bring that left leg forward into pigeon. Stretch the towel out in front if you've got one. Or make sure you're comfortable dropping down towards your mat or the floor. And remember that you should never feel pigeon pose in the front knee. That indicates that you've got your foot too far forward. So that foot should be back far enough that there's no pressure in the knee. You should feel some activation of the butt on the forward leg. And we're going to increase that activation by stretching up on the inhale. And then keeping that length in the rib cage as we drop to the elbows or the floor. Two more nice deep breaths. Nice deep inhale up. You can just switch sides, stepping back and forward, or take your half of the asana. 
So that right foot goes to the back center of the mat, or thereabouts. Align that front leg. Again, no pressure in the knee. Buttock is where you should feel most of this, if not all of it. Deep inhale up. Keep that length. Exhale. Nice deep breath. Crown on top. And we'll take a nice deep breath and switch to the other side. So this time we want that foot very soft in the front. Now if you have a lot of mobility in your thighs, you're more than welcome to open your leg up and have this be more square. We want to come on to the left hand in the front center of the shin and lean that weight into the right thigh. We also want to keep it there. People like to cheat the pose by kind of coming into the left buttock. Let's stay to the right. Bring that right foot up and grab it, which may be your pose right there. If that's a good stretch, stay where you are. Otherwise, deepen by bringing that foot down by the hip. Twist slightly into the right. two of the largest muscles in your body and they're very powerful. Poses like this are uncomfortable and people want to escape them. You have to just breathe into it. So keep your weight into the left. Stay tall. Bring that left foot up and hook it. Again, this may be your pose or maybe you can pull it down toward your buttock. to the seated position. We're coming into Janu Shirshasana, our one-legged seated forward bend. So we'll tuck that right foot against the left groin by the pelvis. Press into the front ankle, or that folded ankle, sorry, and thigh, so that you're very square. Quarter inch contraction through the thigh, no more. Deep inhale up through the right body. Deep exhale down. Top. 
and stay in Dandasana or take your half vinyasa. That left foot comes into the right groin now, back by the pelvis. No one's hips are square. We all have a little bit of asymmetry. So your legs don't need to be in the exact same position. They need to give you the same kind of mobility. So kind of play with your foot position. For me, I have to have my foot a little bit further forward on this side. Take it up through that left body on the deep inhale. Really lengthen. Exhale down. Take a half vinyasa to a kneeling position. Feel so ankles, knees, and thighs together. Sit down into the feet. Let everything really settle onto those feet. Keep the legs fairly strong. We're going to cross our arms into our toss enough to stretch the shoulders. Start out here, come slowly across, and twine around. Now if you have shoulder problems, just hug. Legs together, relax knees or half vinyasa. We're coming back to the knees, but onto our big toes. So big toes under, walk those knees back and squeeze your ankles and heels close. Just relaxing down onto the feet. Hollow the abdomen slightly so your weight's really on your feet.
Ignoring pinky toe, scoop the top four toes of your feet, pull them open slightly, and squeeze your feet back towards your pelvis. Now activate your thighs and press them into the floor. And every two seconds you're gonna to have to reactivate and keep pressing. Keep pressing, even if your legs are flat, you can still work the groin here. Prananta. We're going to come into Ubaya Paragushtasana or Ubaya Tadasana, depending. So Paragushtasana is holding both big toes and taking the legs up. Elbows are bent, so your legs are not at maximum extension. Or you can take the sides or tops of your feet and do that. Shoulders down, torso up. Pranamta. So you can come back to bound angle and hang out there or take a half vinyasa. out to the side in Upavishta Konasana, not as wide as you can absolutely go. We want to easily be able to grab the big toes or tops of the feet. So legs are open comfortably. Start with a good carriage of the torso, lifting yourself up, strong legs, second toe points to the ceiling. Now you can use your hands behind you for leverage to kind of lift the torso. Pranamta. So we're going to come forward to the toes or the tops of the feet. So stretch down. Now grab your big toes and pull with your chest if that's what gives you leverage. If you can come forward easily, then take the tops of your feet. Work to lower your navel inside the groin to the floor. supporting yourself as needed. Take the insides of your knees, bring those legs together. Tuck. Let's take a half vinyasa. Exhaling forelimb stick, straight, strong body. Cobra or upward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right back to the seated position. Nice deep inhale, right foot into half lotus. Left leg underneath. Work to feel symmetric. So have your knees far enough apart that it's easy to rest your legs in the position. They should be a little bit wider than your shoulders or no narrower than your shoulders. So if you can sit symmetrically, feel comfortable with your knees squared up to the width of your shoulders, that's great. Your posture is open, shoulders down and back, soft palms. Prananta. So you can just stay here, or you can swap that right leg underneath and take a half vinyasa. Right back down. 
Stretch those legs out, proper alignment on your mat. And then symmetry on this side. And again, that can be wider or narrower, but no narrower than the width of your shoulders. When we go in, this is called Lukasana, we're getting into a totally different pose from half lotus. Soft palms, good posture. You can stay here or take one more half vinyasa. Back down. Our last pose in the seated sequence here is going to be a little bit more ab work. Just one more for a short moment. Then we'll do our closing sequence. We're actually going to wrap up with a little bit of breathing. Skull shining, my favorite. So for the ab work, let's bring our hands forward onto the tips of our fingers, just even with the end of your thigh, so where your patella, your kneecap is, align your wrist just above that. So this is your absolute hand position. You can't move your hands any further forward or back. You want to fire up those thighs by stretching the feet out and then work to create abdominal compression by pulling in. Even if you can't lift your legs, just contract. Come out if you need to. Two more breaths. Last one. Nice. And back down. So that's our little bit of ab work for the sequence. Let's go ahead and scoot the butt slightly forward and then come to the reclined position. <clears throat> so we're going to come to reclined bound angle. So bring the soles of your feet together and your knees out. Keep your lower back flat on the floor. Take your arms out approximately parallel to your thighs and relax them to the mat. Gently fold your legs up, soles of the feet down, then legs up. Bring your left thigh up, take your right leg over it, and gently hug the knee just a little bit. Left foot to the floor, right foot to the floor, left foot over the right thigh, gentle hug of that right knee.
runter. Right foot to the floor. Left foot to the floor. Spread those legs out. So I recommend a spinal twist to close. Now some people can't do spinal twists because it strains their lower back too much. I'm one of those people. So instead of coming into a spinal twist, I roll onto my side and stretch my arm out. So I'll do it with my head towards the camera so you can see my modification. And if you're someone with a sensitive lower back, you can do this as well. So let's pull those feet in. Hips two inches to the left. Pull them up, lower to the right with perfect form. So your thighs are stacked, knees are even. <clears throat> now if you're a spinal twister, right arm rests on the left that leg and the torso twists open. And if you're not, stretch very straight up and neutralize the back. Slowly come back to neutral. Centered on the mat. Move your hips two inches to the right. Lift your knees and drop to the left. So again, everything is perfectly stacked. Left hand to the right thigh, right arm out for a twist, or very long spine, stretch that arm up and stay neutral. Come back to your spine. Reset yourself on the mat. Hug your knees to your chest and then rock gently to an upright position. Or you can roll to your side and push yourself up, depending. So find a comfortable seated position. So that can be Mukhtasana. Ankles crossed, sitting comfortably. You may need to prop your buttocks up with the edge of your mat or a pillow. You can also sit in half lotus if that's comfortable. And you can sit on either side or with either ankle. We're going to do a two rounds of skull shining, which is a short, rapid breath through the nostrils while keeping the face, neck, and shoulders very relaxed. It's super ten tempting to sort of tense up and move the body or restrict. You want to stay very loose. So keep the arms in a position where they're supple. Take a deep inhale. And exhale all that arrow. And Kapalabhati.
couple more breaths like that. And then if you'd like, we'll do one more round of skull shining, or you can just sit quietly and breathe while we do the skull shining here. And one more deep breath. Push all the air out. Keep taking a few more deep breaths. You may feel really spacey or a little bit fizzy or vibrating. That's very normal. Just let that sensation distribute from your hands and feet through your body. And let's take one more breath here and then come to Shavasana. So let's come to a reclined position. Again, proper form, heel bones just on the floor, ankles even with the edge. Lay back. Feet come wide enough towards the sides of the mat that you can easily lie comfortably flat. Arms are wide enough from the sides that your palms can face up. So check in with yourself and make sure you're feeling fairly relaxed here. And then take a really, really deep breath and pause the inhale. Hold this for a moment and now relax. Check in with your body again and make sure that your hips, thighs, ankles, knees, everything feels even and loose on the mat. You really want to feel long and level in Shavasana so that you can be comfortable during the pose itself, it is a pose. So you really want to be comfortable during the pose. Check with your shoulders now. Make sure that you feel like your hips and spine and everything is nice and square. It doesn't matter what it looks like, it matters how it feels. Make sure that you feel correct so that way you can be in the pose. You want to hold Shavasana for 15 minutes and you want to do it without moving. It's okay to allow yourself to drift off your body doesn't really go to sleep during Shavasana. Instead, your mind is in an altered brainwave state that feels very relaxed. So to most people, that feels like sleep. In reality, it's the integration of prana, it's a softer brainwave state, everything is very loose. So you really wanna be holding this for 15 minutes. So we're gonna start by taking one more deep breath. Brief pause, and now release. And this is your prep for Shavasana. As always, my wife and I hope you are well, and we thank you for joining us for another classical Ashtanga Asana practice. Thank you, and namaste.